So we are going ahead and start the recording. All right. And then please, again, we ask that you uh, remain on mute during uh, during our conversation here. And I'm actually going to uh, turn on some transcription here <clears throat> so that those of you who have requested it uh, will have access to the, that transcription. All right. OK, so first off, you know, we're going to uh, go to office.com, which will allow us to uh, access the stream uh, application. Oops. So in office.com, you'll see that this is the general pane that you have. You have all the applications that you might have access to. And then um, the certain application we're going to uh, cover today is called Microsoft Stream. So Microsoft Stream is a video repository uh, which allows you to store and distribute videos across your organization. These videos can be from different sources. Last week, we actually went over um, how to record videos within Microsoft Teams. So within Microsoft Teams, which is our application for productivity, again, last week we did go over, you know, how to schedule a lecture. And then in that lecture, how to actually record it or record a meeting, for example, and have that meeting be saved to Microsoft Stream. So within Stream, you have a bunch of different videos that you have access to. For example, if I hover over to the top of the screen here, I will see different things like discover, my content, and create. So for example, a meeting that you might have recorded in Teams will be posted under videos under my content or in meetings here. So if I click on videos, I'll see, you know, that lecture week three uh, video right here. And then I can click on it within stream to access the video. So in this page within Microsoft Stream, I'm able to do many different things. I can watch the video here, adjust things like volume and captions, and then I can share and distribute the video among different parties. So I can share the video through email, embed it within a web page within the university, or just give a direct link. One of the first things that I try to get out of the way with Stream is Stream is intended to be internal. It's kind of like an internal video service for the university. It is not intended to post and share videos out to the general public. So by default, Microsoft Stream only allows you to post videos to University of Incarnate Word employees, staff members, or students, and authorized external uh, um, users in other organizations that you have a relationship with. You can also like videos as well, just like you would in other services. This does a couple things. Everyone in your entire university will have access to this homepage. And the homepage can bring something up called trending videos. Trending videos and popular channels allow students, staff, and the admin fa uh, faculty to easily find relevant content that might have been liked or distributed to a certain group of people. So, you know, that's why we would have a like button on our videos. All right. There's also a edit button in, a, in each video. If you are the owner of a video, you'll see different options here like adding it to a group of group or channel, updating the video details, 
trimming the video, replacing the video, deleting, or even downloading it. So this is super useful for, you know, if you're recording some content and you want to distribute it to a bunch of people, but you want to edit it very quickly. You can actually edit a stream video by just clicking on trim here. It loads the video. And then as you can see right here, you're able to cut and change different aspects of the video to your liking. You can apply it or cancel. Again, the purpose of this is for you to easily edit a recorded video within stream and not have to download it and send it to different places. You can also do things like update the video details. So this is actually a very useful pane for video um, owners. You can change the name, create a description, and you can also include things like hashtags. For example, biology. The hashtag makes it easy so that if someone is searching for a certain video within the stream ecosystem up here, they can search biology, for example, and this video would come up. So imagine, you know, your university has thousands of faculty members or um, students, and if they all use the service, there's going to be tons of video, and it's going to be hard to kind of find it. So one way to do this is through hashtags. I'll go over some more in just a bit. Stream videos can have captions automatically. So anything that you record or upload, the Microsoft Stream Service can actually caption it automatically. This video that I actually showed here, it doesn't have any captions. Usually they would show up right here. But that's because I probably didn't have any voice during the video. However, in the edit video pane, I'm able to add captions automatically. I'm sorry, uh, manually, if they're not generated automatically. And I saw, you know, auto generate a caption file is not selected here. So I need to upload a caption file. And I can do that in any of these languages that Microsoft supports, and then through a file. Stream supports one caption file per video. I can also upload custom subtitles. So for example, if I look through the auto-generated subtitles and they weren't to my liking, I can upload the ones on my own as well. Now, I can also set the video language. So if the language of the video was in English, the person spoke in English. I can just select English, and now you'll see it'll try to auto-generate a caption file. So I'll go ahead and apply that. And there we go. The video is actually generating transcripts on its own. We'll check that. We'll check into that later. Now remember how I said that you know Stream is uh, permission-based. So the videos that you record and view will only be accessible to a certain amount of people. So here's an interesting thought that we went over last week. If you use something like Microsoft Teams to record your stream video, it's only available by default to the members who were part of that meeting or the channel that meeting was held in. So last week, I started a video in you know this week three channel. So by default, when this recording is posted to stream, everyone in that biology class has access to it. And then I, as Kara, have access and am the owner. If I just want to easily distribute this across the entire company or the university, I can just click on allow everyone in your company to view this video. So I can just go ahead and apply that. You'll notice right here, there's a little handy dandy permissions tab or icon which shows, you know, hey, this is um, company wide. Everyone in the company can view this video. Awesome. So going back to the content screen. 
Now, I introduced one way last week that you can add videos to stream, and that was through Microsoft Teams. But you have many other options to add stream videos. You can upload a video from your desktop. Any video like MP4s or MOV files, those are supported. So if you record a video in another content creation app like OBS Studio, or you simply use Windows or Mac to record your video, you can upload it within Stream and take advantage of the auto captioning service, the distribution to your university, and the secure realm in which, which it's held. You know, if the video has information regarding your admin practices, financials, or you know anything company or admin related, you, you can use Stream to keep that video and have it accessible to your entire company. So you know the process of just uploading a video is simply going to upload and then um, clicking on browse to select from your computer. Now I mentioned you know .mov and .mp4 files. You can see all the supported format files right here. And it'll tell you, you know, what formatted files are um, allowed. OK. The next things you can do with Microsoft Stream is you can also record your, your screen. Excuse me. Now, for example, say you wanted to give your staff members or your department members an overview of a product or a process that you might have. You can do this many different ways. You can hold a Teams meeting. You can record something and send it to them. An easy way with auto transcription would be using the recorded screen section within Stream. Recording your screen allows you to take a 15 minute video. So it's 15 minute time limit of the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and just allow. And once I press record, it will record my voice and the screen. So there's me. And then I can choose, by the way, I'm doing this from the web browser. There's no need to download an app. I can choose to record my entire screen, an application window, or just a tab within my browser. So I'm going to click on entire screen. It gives me a timer. And then now I can switch back to the window and then come back here to stop and review my recording. So, you know, I can start recording um, and I just stopped it, by the way. But, you know, once I record, I can be able to go to, you know, whatever I want. So, for example, let me try this here. I'm going to click out of this screen here. And, you know, I'm going to start recording a Word document. Or, you know, whatever process that I might be recording. Everything's being recorded, even my desktop. And then once I'm done, I can just go straight to uh, back to Microsoft Stream. All right. And then, oh, there it is. And then I can go ahead and stop the recording and upload it to stream. So I'm going to go ahead and upload it here to stream. And so I've recorded 28 seconds here, and then I'm going to name the recording, you know, screen date one. Again, I can add the same types of hashtags, for example, biology. I spoke in English, so I'm going to do video language of English so that the captions can be auto generated. And then I'll go ahead and publish it. And actually, Stream gives you an easy option to just save the video file in case, for example, you want to put it on YouTube or another application. So I just recorded my screen. The video is going to be processed. The same type of transcript is going to show up here, and everything is going to be well. Speaking of transcript, let's see it in action. So I'm going to go back to this video here. I recorded this again from Microsoft Stream, and as you can see right here, the transcripts have appeared. 
So this process normally takes about, you know, 10 minutes after your video is, is done recording. If you have a longer video, expect it to take a longer time to process the transcript. But as you can see here, every single um, second or series of seconds is accounted for within the video. And then the transcript is fully created. Every single word that my microphone has captured is being able is is being transcripted. Now I can do a couple things with this. If I play the video, I'm going to see that the transcript is highlighting where in the video is being um, uh, the sound is coming from. You know what in the transcript is corresponding to the seconds within the video. So if I'm a person that wants to find something very quickly, it's a 60 minute long video and you know I don't want to listen to the whole thing, I can do things like search the transcript. So I know like Surface Pen is going to come soon, but I just I really need to go over where the content was. So I'm going to type in Surface here and then click through it and it tells me all of the different places that Surface comes in. So if I want to go to that point within the video, I can just click on that section. And there is the point within the video that it's mentioned. To give you a little more context, here's a video with actual um, demonstrations on it. So this example is from a lab within a class. And you know, say, you know, I'm it's an anatomy lab, so I want to search for maybe the head. As you can see, stream tells me three different points within the video that the word head was mentioned or something within the context of that word. I can again just click through it and it goes straight to the video area of where the head was mentioned. This is super useful for students, but not only um, uh, students, but also staff as well. Depending on how you learn, um, this could be a very useful tool. And uh, yes, uh, Dr. Ramona, that's exactly right. Learners who might have an approved uh, accommodation, such as note taking, they would find this very useful. One other thing that you can do to make sure your transcripts are exactly right is you can actually just edit them on the fly. So I'm going to show that one more time. But you know, say um, in, in 142 right here, I want to change it, which refers to the head. I listened to the video. I'm the one who created the video. I actually said neck instead of head. But you know, the transcript service said head. OK, so I can actually just click on edit here. And there it is. I can change that from head to neck. This is exactly you know, something that I want to do because it helps me create a better transcript for my students or my staff. I can save that and then it's it's changed. You know, when when people go through the transcript, they'll see neck instead of head. I'm just going to go ahead and back. All right. Now remember, I mentioned, you know, if you're the owner of the video, you're able to update the video details. And you see that because this video already has a caption generated, there's a caption file. I'm going to just zoom in here. There's a caption file already generated for this video. And so what I can do is I can actually download the file. And then I have it on my desktop as a reference. So here's the um, the caption file, and you know you can use whatever program you want to modify it, and then re-upload it. Again, you can also upload your own subtitle file. Stream also has the ability for noise suppression, so noise suppression allows viewers to isolate speech from other sounds and music. So it's a great way to add a additional noise suppression feature to your video, 
even if you didn't have it while you were recording. And again, remember to set the permissions however you'd like. All right. So as we approach, you know, the end of this uh, half an hour, I'd like to ask, are there any questions uh, to what we covered so far? If anyone would like to raise their hand, they can go ahead at this time. OK, I see a question from Adela. Go ahead. This may be considered a dumb question, but what's the difference between captioning a transcription and subtitles? Yeah, no problem. Um, so captioning, captioning is, I'm actually, you know, not 100% sure, so I'll, I'll defer to anyone else who might have a better answer than me. But captioning is referred to uh, when you are when you're captioning something during a like live stream or live event. Uh, so for example, what we're doing right now, I had you know these the PowerPoint captioning captionings going during that PowerPoint. So for example, this transcript here is a recorded portion of the video uh, captions or or whatever audio was in the video. So transcripts are something you're able to search through, edit, and um, you know you use uh, a tool to actually search through different different transcripts or different areas within the audio recording. And then subtitles would be for different languages. So they would be captions of different languages. So you would have an English subtitle for other for non for um, English speakers. You would want a Spanish subtitle. You know, many different languages. Um, so these captions that you see on the video are relating to the video, and then I can go in and change the caption slash subtitle language. So if I had a different language here. I would be able to change it to Spanish, for example, Spanish subtitles. So that's kind of the difference between all three. Um, they actually have a lot of interchangeability. Uh, so captioning, um, subtitles, and then transcriptions are very similar. I would say captioning and subtitles are actually very similar. However, transcripts, again, would be the recording of the audio the written record of the audio. And you can kind of search through it um, at different time points, and then you can edit it as well. So that's a good question. All right, I see another question uh, from Suleiman. Go ahead. So uh, for the, like when we post the video on the YouTube unlisted, mm -hmm. and we can just provide the link to the students that they can just go and watch the video. But for the stream, uh, unless we make uh, like the public to the entire university, is there another way to share just the link uh, without sharing the, the entire university just for that particular class or for a particular group of faculty? Right, yeah, there is. So for example, if you're the owner of a video, you're able to um, add people or channels or groups. So uh, in the next half, I'm going to go over what channels and groups are. But for example, if you don't want to share it with the entire company, you know, make sure that's unselected. But I could say, you know, I want to share it with the biology class. So there's the biology class group. And all I would do is I would select that. And then this link that I that I use, so if I apply that, and um, you see I have the share option here. Mm -hmm. If I share this, I have a direct link to the video, which I can then share with people. I can also um, email them, so I can email biology, for example, and I can just add them right here and share. But so uh, Oh, go ahead. You need to create a group in order to share with that group first, I guess, right? Well, yeah, um, normally groups are already created for the university. 
So for example, um, the faculty group, perhaps, if you've created something in like your Office 365 email here, you know, if you've created a group here, it's going to be available within stream as well. Uh, so they're connected in that way. But you can again easily create a group within the sharing um, section. And then in this next section, I'm actually going to go over how to create a channel or a group in stream, if that's how you want to work that way. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thank you. So Thank let's get. You, but I think for a future uh, thing, maybe it would be nice just as long as I share the link, if that person receive it, uh, it might be like I have. I might have a class, but I want to share a person who is interested in with that subject, right. who is not in that class. So that feature might be uh, nice, like the YouTube unlisted uh, sharing link feature. Thank you. Dan. Awesome. Oh yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thanks for the suggestion. All right. Can I just say something? To, yes. Um, right now we're in the process of having um, groups automatically created for for courses. So um, I mean that information will be forthcoming soon. But you want um, right now we don't. Uh, groups have to be created manually, but um, in the very, very near future before school starts, groups will be automatically generated. So you won't have to create a group. It will already be available. Awesome. Thank you for that information. That definitely helps. All right. So, you know, like we were saying, you know, the sharing is kind of like on a on an individual or group based and then you can also do a company wide share. Now we went over a couple different areas here. We went over, you know, how to upload a video and look through it and go through transcription. We went over how to record a screen. Uh, the next two things I want to kind of go over are what we call channels and groups. So a group within a Microsoft stream organization is something that you can do to share videos and collaborate with colleagues. So if there's, for example, a, a faculty group that you, you want to share with, um, you can create a group. Now, as mentioned in the chat or in um, by, by a person within the organization, your groups will already be created automatically. So you, know, you don't have to worry about that. You can simply share to a group. But like, for example, say you have a group created within Microsoft Stream. So these groups that I see here are actually Office 365 groups, meaning they've been created by my organization automatically. So, you know, say I have an admin group right here. In this group, I'm able to upload again a video, create a channel, and then, you know, share everything I upload in this group will automatically be shared with that group. So for example, if I upload a video here, let's see, I'm not sure if I have any videos, but you know, just say I, I upload a video. Within this group, uh, the video will be uploaded, the transcripts will be generated, everything will automatically happen, and then everyone is already automatically granted access. So they'll either get a notification or they can simply visit this page to see a video. Let me see if I have, I think this, this group, yep, there we go. So uh, as I see right here, these group videos are automatically created and they're automatically uploaded and distributed to this biology group. That can happen in many different ways. These two meetings that I recorded right here were actually recorded within Microsoft Teams. So they were recorded in the biology 10 team which means a group was created within stream and it's automatically posted to that group. There's no work on my end to actually do anything here. Within a group, I can also create channels. So if I have a group that has maybe over a hundred different videos, it doesn't make sense to just have them all listed here because it's hard for people to search that way. You know, if imagine if I had 100 videos listed here, it would be very hard. I can sort it definitely. I can even search for it, but perhaps channels might be better. 
So for example, in biology, I'll have a channel for anatomy. I might have a channel for organs. And remember, I can set permissions to the channel as well. Can make it just, I only want my group to have access, or maybe I want every, everyone in the company to. In this case, I'm gonna leave it to group. So there's my organs channel. Within a channel, you'll have different videos that can show up. So for example, I can select more files here to upload, or when I create a video, so if I create a, a recording screen video, for example, I can just upload it to the channel directly or tag it within the channel. So again, really what we're talking about here is segmentation within stream. You know, my biology class right now only has two videos and I don't anticipate it having maybe more than 20 in the year. So maybe I don't need channels. You know, channels might not make sense for me. That seems like more work to do for only 20 videos. But perhaps I might have over 100 videos or 50 or, you know, 60. Then it might make more sense to actually segment it within channels so that I have a highly organized system within Microsoft Stream. Now, users, again, are able to just go to the home page and go to their videos or you know they're going to search through my content another place they search is discover so discover allows a user to get a quick overview of what they have access to within stream so when you're thinking about you know how do your users interact with your videos they can view it from a video perspective just all the videos that are trending within your stream or within a channel or they can search specifically by people. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for Kara, that's my instructor. And now I'll be able to see everything that she's done. Awesome. And then again, under my content, you know, imagine every faculty member, every student has this view. They can see like, you know, what meetings they were a part of and they can easily get that. They can easily go to channels that they're a part of. They can see groups that they're a part of, and they can search for their videos that way. All right, so just to recap, we've gone over you know, creating content, adding content and editing content, and then now we just went over how to segment your videos, if it makes sense for your purpose. You can use groups, you can use channels. All right, so how do we actually check for comprehension within a video? Does someone understand the content you're trying to get across? And um, did someone watch the video? You know, do you, do you want a way to actually record attendance? This feature will be in collaboration between Microsoft Stream and Microsoft Forms another Microsoft 365 product. So let's take a look at a video here. We're gonna go back to the lab video. Now, during this video, I want people to you know, understand the content, but then I also wanna make sure that I can assess them. You know, I want, for example, just imagine I am a part of a department and we're going over, you know, maybe our weekly priorities or weekly metrics. And so I distribute a video that has all the information in it, but I wanna make sure someone understands that. So if you'll notice here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so you can kind of see it. But um, in, this, in this document here, or I'm sorry, in this video, I have the, the timeline, and I have this, this dot right here, and I've named it Midway. So watch what happens when I actually get to that dot. So you know, the, the video is going, we're, we're going over anatomy, and then I hit the dot here. The video actually stops 
and a Microsoft form appears over the video. Now, while this is loading, I'll tell you that this Microsoft form was created to check comprehension within the video. So while it loads, where I created this form is in forms.microsoft.com. That's the access that you have to Microsoft Forms. So I created the form, you know, do you understand the scientific method or do you understand this body part being shown? So I've added a question and I have, you know, three different responses here, but, and then I want it to be embedded within the video. So I embedded it in the video and how I did this. So for some reason, it's not loading right now, but I'll go ahead and show you how we did this. So in a video where I find transcripts right here, I'm able to switch over to the tab called interactivity. And I see I've already added two different forms here. So I've added a roster form at time zero zero. This is right at the beginning of the video. It opens up a form and then I'm able to, I just ask a question, you know, enter your email or enter your name. And once they enter it, I'm able to actually check that they actually watch the video. And then I can continue to the rest of the video. Let's choose another video because I think that one might be having some problems. All right, let's do this one. So this one doesn't have any forms in it, but if I wanted to, I can just add a form. And within this, I need a couple things. So I need the form name and I need to paste the URL. So the URL comes from Microsoft Forms. So you have to create a form within Microsoft Forms first before actually doing this. So we're gonna go to Microsoft Forms here, and I'll show you an example of just creating, you know, a simple form here. I'm gonna add a quiz, because I wanna check for understanding. So let's do skeletal. All sorts of problem with spelling, skeletal system. Please answer required. I can add, you know, a question or a choice. So I can say, what was the part being shown here? I can require them to answer the question. And then my form is done and I click share right here. When I click on share, I'm able to get the URL right here. So I can go ahead and copy that URL. And then I can go back into stream. Oops. There it is. So I can go back into stream and then go back into interactivity, paste, the form URL, name it as system check or you know whatever I want. And then this is very important. I need to select the part of the timeline where I want this quiz. So I'm going to select right here at 119 or 120. And you notice it'll say 120 right here. And then I can go ahead and add it to the timeline. There we go, I have a assessment form at 120. So again, when I go over at 120 right here, and I'm able to get the form to show up on the screen here. And let's see, hopefully it'll show completely. There we go. So I'm able to answer the, the form right, right here and then. I submit my answer here. 
and then you know back in forms you know if i'm if i'm the educator i'm the person who created this assessment um i can look through my forms here skeletal system check i see that one response has been recorded and i can see you know that that kara has made that response here so i know that you know she is actively responding to the video then of course i can open this in excel if this is something you make as part of your your grade book you know you can easily open the document with an excel and you know get whatever points or whatever feedback you might need to input into your learning management system if that's something you'd like to do and again you know if i just wanted to create a simple form that just says you know check in i can add you know a date here when did you watch this video make it required get the link here go into my uh my recorded video in microsoft stream maybe call it attendance Put it right in the beginning of the video, you know, at 10 seconds perhaps. And right here, the form appears, and I'm able to say, you know, when did you watch this video? I can click, you know, on a date, submit. And within Microsoft Forms, I will see, you know, the response once the response has been inputted. There we go. There's the response. And I can go ahead and say, oh, look, Kara Coleman has responded on 8 10 2020. So I can go even to granular details like time and date. This feature of interactivity is all part of the Microsoft Stream environment to see, you know, be a one stop shop for all of your needs within video, recording, uploading custom videos, captioning, transcription, subtitles, and then finally interactivity with Microsoft Forms. So this is a very powerful way to ensure that your videos are not only uploaded to a secure place that everyone in your org can access, but um, a place where you can check for understanding without having to open multiple different avenues. Uh, you know, you don't have to open up a different website here. You're all within stream. And then again, students, especially, you know, I, I think students find this very helpful where they have this interactive transcript and they can jump through and look at different parts of the video. Whereas, you know, something, for example, like YouTube wouldn't have that function. Um, YouTube does do captioning, but it, you know, there might be a, a very different way people interact with the transcript or have the ability to do um, interactivity with forms uh, during the video. You know, also students can engage with the video by posting comments. As an instructor, you'll be notified when a comment has been added to your video. You know, when a hashtag has been added to your video or when something interactive has been added to your video so that you can come and answer any questions you might have or um, others might have. Now, you know, one of the reasons why I made an attendance form, including a quiz form, was because, you know, you can see how many people have viewed your video, but it's hard to gauge who actually has viewed your video without the right admin tools. So, you know, we made a way to do that via forms um, and then that interactivity tool belt here. Just going through a little bit more of handy dandy features you'll want to know. You know, for example, when the video is running, um, it is highlighted. However, you can enable auto scrolling as well so that, you know, the, the transcript keeps up 
with you wherever you are on the video and you don't have to go back and forth for scrolling. All right, we've reached the last 10 minutes of this training and I'd like to open it up to one more feature and then we'll go ahead and get to questions. One more feature that I'd like to show all of you is under the Create tab. So we went over uploading videos and recording your screen. Microsoft Stream also comes with a thing called a live event. A live event is a great thing within Stream to host things like company meetings or lectures or important presentations that a wide audience needs to view. What you can do with a live event is you're able to add a description, thumbnail, video description, permissions on who's going to view it. So once you are added all that, so I'm just going to say test live event here. Going to create a hashtag, you know it's going to be biology related. I'm going to skip uploading a video for now. You know, I'm going to start, I can start by the way on a specific day or, you know, start as soon as the encoder is connected. And then um, permissions, I want everyone in the company to be able to view it. And I want captions to be automatically generated. Okay. So once I'm done with that, all I need to do now is connect it to an external encoder. So for example, if you're using a product like OBS Studio, or you're using a third-party product to record your, your live video, you can use that within Stream. And this is kind of how why people would use this versus another uh, service. And then by the way, we have something called a, a service ingest URL. So it's kind of like a stream key. So in your encoder, if they need something like that, it's located down here. All right. But what you would do is you would, you know, start your, your setup here, connect it to your encoder. An encoder, again, is a third-party service um, like OBS Studio, for example. And then you're able to use the live event features like captioning, auto-recording, distribution throughout your company. Uh, so it just makes it a much easier for you to actually do this. And then you can also, by the way, see what the audience looks at here. All right. This is a newer feature within Microsoft Stream, and it's actually um, similar to a feature within Teams called Teams Live Events. So I just wanted to quickly go over that um, because you might have seen, you know, what is Live Event and what, what do you actually do with that with Stream? So again, another way to interact with your audience. All right, so I'm actually going to go ahead and open it up to questions. So you can post your questions in the chat. You can raise your hand and ask them, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and take answers or provide answers here. All right, so who has some questions? All right, anyone? Okay, Suleiman, go ahead. So if we uh, integrate this Microsoft Teams uh, with the Blackboard, and is there a way to integrate the, the stream with the Blackboard that uh, the, like when we use the forums and when we uh, ask questions regarding the video, then the grades will be automatically saved in the Blackboard? Is, is that possible at this point or not? So um, I can comment on, you know, I believe, you know, you guys aren't using Teams as your LMS, so, you know, there's no um, integration there. However, with Stream, you know, you're not currently at this point, you're not able to integrate it to a third party LMS like Blackboard. Stream is integrated with all the Microsoft 365 products. So if you kind of do the thinking a little bit, you can integrate Blackboard with Teams 
and then teams can be uh, integrated within, um, uh, I'm sorry, stream can be integrated within teams. So, you know, you see the workflow there. If you put a, if you put a form within stream, it can upload to your LMS in teams and then it could sync with Blackboard. So that's kind of like the thinking there. But as far as stream directly to Blackboard, uh, not today, not that I know of. If uh, I know there are a bunch of Microsoft people as well here. If anyone wants to correct me, they can go ahead. All right. So the next, oh, go ahead, Suleiman. Did you have a follow-up? No, no, I'm done. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, again, like within stream, I'll just mention, you can set permissions so that you know anyone in your school can view it. And again, you can post that link on Blackboard. And as long as they're logged in, you know that'll be fine. Uh, you can embed it as well, and they'll still be able to see it if um, if they're logged in. All right, we have a question from Teresa. Will live stream be compatible with Kaltura? I'm assuming Kaltura is an external encoder. Um, so Teresa, as mm -hmm. long as long as your live event is set up and created and has that it, it so I went over like an in, ingest URL. It's an external URL that you can post in any external encoder to see if it will work. I'm not 100% familiar with Kaltura, but as long as Kaltura takes a URL, you can post the live event URL in there and it will connect. And what the live event within Microsoft Stream does is it checks through you know what you're trying to connect and make sure that it's actually compatible before you actually start the live event all right are there any other questions so far yeah no problem thank you okay just going to disconnect for one moment All right, any hands up? OK. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and share this right here. So this is the survey for today's event. And uh, we'd like for you to kind of fill it out if you are able to. So can, if you go ahead and take a picture of the screen, you'll be able to fill out this survey and uh, provide us some feedback of how the training went, if it was relevant to what you wanted to be covered. And then you can also suggest some things to cover uh, next time as well. Really appreciate it if you take a moment, take a picture of the screen, and then um, you can get that survey link. Again, a recording is being recorded and uh, there will be, it will be sent to uh, the relevant people at the university and uh, you'll be able to view that recording. We'll also send the captioning uh, file so that you can also have a file um, for subtitles. All right, well, if there's nothing else, I'd like you to thank you guys for um, attending today. On behalf of Microsoft, I'm pleased to offer you this training and uh, next week on Monday, same time, we'll have another training uh, on another topic. So we look forward to seeing you next week, Monday at 2 p.m. CST. Thank you, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.